All right. Well, welcome back to our overview of El Salvador. We're going to move on to the uh, second main part here, which is an overview of the players. We're kind of trying to narrow down who the uh, starters and main candidates are. And uh, once again, uh, we do realize that uh, players do kind of move around their positions and uh, this uh, position thing that we're doing is more of a kind of a structure to organize the discussion rather than a hard and fast uh, uh, hard and fast rule about who is in which position, uh, as we'll see in this podcast, actually. Uh, uh, Connor, do you want to start us off with the manager? Yeah, before the players, we'll, we'll take a look at the manager, Hugo Perez. Um, he's been the manager just uh, since... 2021 um so not a lot of experience under his belt however he has coached the uh el salvador u23s and was previously an assistant coach in 2016 and 2015 so he's been around the national setup uh for a little while but like i said um kurt manager of the el salvador national team uh only since earlier this year yeah, and he was actually a, a player for America, uh, quite a quite a big player on the team with seventy three caps, and uh, he played in in uh, the nineteen ninety four World Cup and the uh, nineteen ninety one Gold Cup. So, uh, nevertheless, I think uh, he was born or had ties. I think he is El Salvadorian, and as as you say, he's he's been part of their system for for quite some time. Uh, let's move on to goalkeepers and uh, uh, over to you, Connor. Sure, so uh, first is Mario Gonzalez. He started all four games that El Salvador played in the uh, 2021 Gold Cup. Um, he's only been with the team recently since the start of the year. Uh, so a relative newcomer, 24 years old. Um, but like I said, played played in each and every one of the games in the Gold Cup. Yeah, so uh, that six caps uh, is actually how many caps he had before the Gold Cup. So I guess now he would be up to 10. And uh, whether he will stay there or whether he was just a stand-in for uh, uh, Henry Hernandez uh, it remains to be seen. But let's move on to talk about Henry Hernandez, who's... Uh, who um, is the captain of the team, or at least he was in 2019. Yeah, so he's been with the national team since 2003. So he's 35 or 36. Um, so a real veteran on the team. Um, played in a lot of the, the recent Gold Cups, um, 2015, uh, 2017, and 2019. Like you said, where he was a captain and started and finished all three games, but not selected um for the 2021 gold cup so that's kind of an, an interesting choice yeah and and really it may it may be that uh he is retired he he did play uh eight of their 15 games uh in the lead up to the tournament but um it may be that he's retired or like a lot of players in the gold cup just didn't uh didn't play even though he is based in in el salvador um it looks like they're searching for uh, a real starter, and uh, it's not clear whether Mario Gonzalez has has kind of taken that position or whether they're still searching. But one of the candidates is uh, Kevin Carabantes. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about him? Yeah, so he's been with the team since 2018, but only has uh, one cap. Um, he hadn't played in any of their 15 games since the 2019 Gold Cup. Um, on the bench for 13 of those um, but he kind of seems to be in that uh, perpetually in that backup role. Yeah, that's right. Okay, well that uh, that covers the goalies, and now we're going to move on to uh, the defenders, and we'll begin with uh, uh, the central defender options. There are kind of five names on the list here, uh, starting with Eric Zavaleta. Yeah, Eric Zavaleta is a. He's 28 years old, but a relative newcomer to the uh, El Salvador national setup. Uh, he's played with uh, Toronto FC in Canada uh, since 2015. Um, so one of the uh, MLS-based players. Um, 
and he did start all four games in the recent uh, Gold Cup uh, for El Salvador. Yeah, that's right. His father, uh, Carlos, actually played for the national team uh, when he was in in his day. Uh, 28 years old, and he, he just started with El Salvador in 2021. Uh, so it, it kind of makes you wonder where he's been, where he's been all these years. Yeah, certainly, especially a player playing in the MLS, kind of one of the more high profile teams um, among kind of the current crop of eligible players. So, yeah, curious that he he is such a, a recent newcomer to the team, given his age. Yeah, well, he was born in the USA and he doesn't seem to have had a lot to do with the team. So I wonder if he was, uh, you know, hoping to uh, join the USA and eventually uh, found he couldn't and joined El Salvador, which is often, uh, which which happens quite often. Yeah, for sure. Uh, let's move on to someone who actually was named to the preliminary squad for the 2021 uh, Gold Cup. But... Uh, Oh, no, no, he did. Sorry, uh, my mistake. He did uh, make the cup. Uh, uh, Ronald Gomez. Yeah, um, another newcomer. Um, only five caps going into the Gold Cup, though uh, younger than Zavaleta, only 22 years old, so perhaps an up-and-comer. Um, he started all four games, so got really good exposure and good experience uh, in the Gold Cup and maybe someone that El Salvador chooses to rely on going forward. Yeah, I mean, at 22 years old, he's definitely uh, got more years in him than uh, Zavaleta, so uh, could be a good investment there. Uh, another player who uh, didn't play any games, actually, in the Gold Cup, but is nevertheless a fairly big name in central defence, is Roberto Dominguez. Yeah, he's amassed 40 caps at, at the age of just 24 years old, um, so he seems very well established. Um, he played uh, the vast majority of their games leading uh, leading up to the 2021 Gold Cup um, in the two years since the 2019 uh, version. Um, so a bit of a surprise that he uh, didn't play um, in the most recent tournament. What do you yeah, he that? did. Uh, he did start all the games in 2019. So uh, it is curious that he didn't start. He plays actually in Albania. Um, and played in Bolivia before that, so he does get around a bit. He played for Vancouver too. Yeah, so three continents. Um, certainly yeah. a player who's well traveled and also had some time with uh, some domestic clubs in El Salvador. Right, and then uh, not selected for the squad, but also with quite a few caps, twenty nine caps is uh, Ivan Mancia. Yeah, like many in the team, he's uh, based in El Salvador. Um, he's moved around there, but has has played in El Salvador throughout his career. Um, he played nine of their 15 games since the 2019 Gold Cup. Um, he was under a, a kind of a, a yellow card suspension. Um, do you want to tell us a bit more about that? Uh, I wish I could. I tried to uh, find out because uh, I think it went on for, for six uh, games, the last six games before the Cup, but I couldn't actually find out what that meant. Uh, so, so sorry about that. But because he uh, was a starter in 2017 and 2019, um, I'm guessing he would have been a starter here, except for that kind of mysterious suspension that we don't know about. Yeah, certainly. Um, yeah, like you said, a player who'd, who'd established himself in the tournament previously. So, um, again, likely to see him... Um, I would assume in the octagon. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think uh, I think for the octagon, they're going to need more than just two uh, two main players. Uh, whether it's through injuries or just the sheer number of games they're playing in a row, so all of these guys might factor in. Uh, the last one we're going to look at is Romulo uh, Villalobos. Uh, Villa Lobos. Yeah, he's probably a bit less likely to get some action. He's twenty three years old, just has two caps. Um, he played a couple of the games prior um, to the tournament. Um, he was selected for the final squad, but actually withdrew due to injury. Um, so unable to get uh, some game time, which probably would have served good experience for him had he been able to get on the pitch. Yeah, and it is so hard to tell. I mean, he's an example of uh, a player that they bring in 
uh, one or two games before the start of a tournament. Every team seems to have a few players like this. So uh, you, you'd feel a bit uh, under the gun as an experienced player because it seems uh, when they find someone someone young and good, they uh, put them on the field and uh, that means someone's out of the picture. Yeah, you see that every team uh, from the smallest to the most powerful countries, there's always guys coming in for tournaments with just a handful of caps. So um, not always the guys who help them qualify, which is interesting, but um, yeah, for whatever reason, maybe strong domestic seasons that have just finished gives these guys a bit of a window of opportunity. Yeah, that's right. Well, one guy who uh, hasn't moved out of his position as we move on to uh, left backs. I was trying to make a smooth transition there, but uh, I, I don't feel like it really worked. But uh, Alexander Laren is a real uh, a real staple in the team. Uh, he did miss the 2009 uh, 19 Gold Cup, but uh, he, he's been in the setup for quite a while and a starter. Uh, sorry, I think I'm taking some of your lines there, Connor. No, that's fine. Yeah, 57 caps. He's been with the team since 2012. Um, he actually had a bit of a, a bit of an absence, um, a two-and-a-half-year absence um, that ended in December 2020. Um, and then he played seven of the, of their nine games since that, leading up to the tournament. Um, he he started the first three group games, or start so he started all four games. Um, subbed out in the last game against Qatar, um, but yeah, a real staple seems to have really nail down that left uh, left uh, defensive position. Yeah, and uh, he also took a free kick against Mexico and uh, hit the post. So it seems like he's pretty versatile as a as a left defender. And in fact, uh, here I have him coded as a left defender uh, and a left midfielder. I do get these uh, codings from uh, looking at a few websites. So uh, it may be that he sometimes moves up into um, midfield also. Uh, next is uh, Jonathan Jimenez, uh, who was, um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, he would probably be the second contender um, on, on the left side of defense. Um, similar age, around 29 years old, um, but 21 caps only, so, so about a third of the caps um, of Alexander Laren. Um, not selected uh, for the 2021 Gold Cup. Um, he'd been involved in in four of their 15 games since the 2019 Gold Cup, um, but he wasn't selected um, for 11 others. So he seems to kind of fallen out of favor and, like we said, not in contention uh, for this Gold Cup. Yeah, I put him in as a candidate because uh, uh, he was a starter in 2019. So um, it, it looks like he could still be... Uh, part of the setup, but he's really been in and out of the team. He was selected for the preliminary squad in 2015 and didn't make the final cut, but then he didn't even make the preliminary squad in 2017. And as you said, uh, uh, in in 2021, wasn't even selected for the preliminary squad. So he may be out of the picture, but uh, he was a starter in 2019. Uh, let's go to actually two of the bigger names on the team, uh, Brian Tamakis and uh, Alex Rolden. And uh, maybe you can do uh, Brian Tamakis there. Yeah, Brian Tamakis, he's 26 years old, 37 caps, so pretty good return um, at that age. Um, like uh, Alexander Laren, he was, he was out of the squad or absent from the squad for a bit. He had an 18-month absence. Um, but then played played uh, all nine of their games prior to the 2021 Gold Cup, um, and then played in uh, in three of their four games um, in this tournament. So again, a pretty well established player. Yeah, there's a bit of a funny story with him. Actually, he uh, he uh, clashed heads uh, early in in game two. Maybe that's why he was out of game game three, and he was wearing a bandage uh, for the rest of the game, and. Uh, at the end of the game, it turned out that uh, uh, El Salvador had made six substitutions. And uh, they claimed later that one of the substitutions was a head injury. But it was kind of funny because he he, uh, 
he had clashed heads 10 minutes into the game and, and played the rest of the game. Uh, well, he was subbed out actually at 89, but I, I don't think that's how the concussion rule is really supposed to work. <laughs> A, a dubious interpretation of it at best, but they got away with it. it <laughs> they did. Funny. They got away with it. Okay, well, uh, Alex Rolden actually has a brother uh, who played for the U.S. in the Gold Cup. Um, right. And he was born in the USA. Do you want to tell us a little bit about him? Yeah, born in the U.S. and spent uh, pretty much his entire uh, professional career in the U.S. Um, playing for a couple... Uh, Kind of lower league teams, but now with the Seattle Sounders, um, actually a second stint with the with the Sounders. Um, so one of their MLS based players, just a handful uh, in the squad. Um, he played uh, all four games in the Gold Cup. Sub subbed in in the first two, but then was a starter um, for the for the final group stage game against Mexico and the uh, the knockout game against Qatar. Um, so yes, and and even scored a goal. Um, he uh, he got the uh, the first goal in a two nil win against Guatemala in their opening game. And apparently that goal caused him a lot of pain because uh, uh, I think uh, one of his parents is from uh, Guatemala and the other from El Salvador. He was also born in the USA, but uh, he really is attached to Guatemala, kind of uh, emotionally attached. And I think he was thinking of playing for them. Um, and then uh, in his in his debut game, he uh, not only played Guatemala but suffered the pain of scoring against them. Poor guy. That would cause uh, a lot of kind of mixed feelings, wouldn't it? It would, as it would have been had he ended up playing his uh, his brother in the United. Uh, had they met the United States, but uh, they avoided that. Yeah, he he didn't end up facing him. Uh, before uh, we're going to move on to midfielders here, um, but but uh, before we look at defensive midfielders who are kind of moving up field, uh, you get some of these players who are kind of all over the field. It seems like every time I look at a graphic, this guy is in a different position. Uh, he's one of also one of their very big players, uh, Serene uh, Darwin Serin, and I think he also has a brother uh, playing for the for the El Salvador team. Yeah, I uh, would have to verify that. Um, but yeah, he's been with uh, El Salvador since 2012. 65 caps, four goals. Um, he started um, basically being a starter for their last five gold cups. Um, so certainly someone who's, who's kind of one of the first names on the on the team sheet. Um, he he uh, subbed out in the first... Uh, first three games but but started every game in this tournament that's right he got a couple of yellow cards he's also uh based in the mls like uh, uh, quite a few uh, el salvador players are and if you're wondering what vm means it's it's my own designation uh, a versatile midfielder let's move on to the defensive midfielders and we have uh, a couple of kind of um uh, nominations as the uh, as a starter. Well, I guess because Henry Enriquez was uh, not in the 2021 World Cup, that Marvin Monterosa took over as the captain. Yes, that's right, taking it over from the goalkeeper. Um, Monterosa um, played uh, played in all or made appearances in all four of the uh, the Gold Cup games, and it played in 12 of the 15 games since the 2019 Gold Cup. Um, so a pretty regular in the squad. Um, like like a lot of players, he plays uh, his domestic football in El Salvador. Um, and yeah, worked his way to to deserving the armband uh, for the most recent Gold Cup. Yeah, it's a bit of an interesting history with him. He, uh, he uh, did uh, start with the team in 2014. Uh, wasn't selected for the preliminary squad in 2015. Uh, was selected for the preliminary squad in 2017, uh, but didn't make the final cut, uh, was a sub in 2019, and then uh, now he's a starter and uh, captain of the team. So that that um, is just a story that, uh, that um, has a lesson of kind of never quit, because uh, 
you'll get there if you keep trying. Yeah, slow and steady. <laughs> yeah, okay. The other defensive midfielder we look at is Isaac Portillo. Yeah, he's a bit more on the fringes. Um, he's only been involved with the team recently, um, since 2021. Um, only has seven caps to his name. He was subs subbed in in the first three games, those being the group stages of the 2021 Gold Cup. Um, but, uh, yeah, probably someone who, who has a bit more of a supporting role, um, certainly compared to some of the players around him, uh, Saren and uh, Monterosa, who we mentioned. Yeah, I wonder if I made a mistake in including him in a list of starters. I think I was uh, struck by the fact that he played uh, seven of the eight games in the lead-up to the tournament, so it kind of looked like he was going to be uh, one of the one of the main players for him. But then uh, I I never know if uh, if those seven games are as a starter or as a sub. But uh, anyway, he is one of the one of the players who. Um, might be uh, in in and around, as you say. Uh, we'll move on to central midfielders, and we only have really one in this position, uh, Narcissa Orlana. Right, yeah, Orlana. Um, he played in uh, the, the three group stage game, but then uh, I believe was suspended uh, for the for the knockout round, having collected two yellow cards, so he didn't see any action then. That's right. Um, yeah, he played nine of their 15 games since 2019 Gold Cup, um, not selected for the other six, um, which is all their World Cup qualifiers. Um, he's also been involved in previous tournaments. Um, he was on the roster but didn't see any action in 2015, but then was a regular starter in 2017 and 2019 Gold Cups. Yeah, and uh, I would imagine uh, he'll be a big part of their team uh, going into the uh, going into the um, Octo. Uh, have we decided what to call that? I mean, it's not our decision. I I liked uh, the suggestion of Oka, but I think I hear it being called the uh, Octo more often now. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's been settled. Um, the hex was nice and easy, but now they've got eight teams there. <laughs> Still experimenting, I think. Yeah, that's right. Okay, well, uh, the left midfielder situation really, um, uh, really kind of emphasizes how artificial the structure we've set up here is, uh, because um, I don't think any of these four players actually did play left midfielder because I think the right midfielder played on the left <laughs> during the um, the 2021 Gold Cup. And uh, Wacken Rivas is an interesting uh, story. Uh, David Rugamas was, uh, they had high hopes for him because he's been doing well as a forward. Uh, but I think he was on the bench for the first game and then he left the team due to illness. And I'm not dead sure of this, but it seems like they put uh, Joaquin Rivas uh, up front as a forward, and uh, he did very well. So I have him as a left midfielder because that's his position on the websites uh, that I check. Um, but uh, obviously he's he's uh, he played as a forward in 2021 and did so well that maybe they will convert him to a forward. Uh, maybe we should uh, start with learning a little bit about him before we do the first name on the list now that I've started it. Yeah, well, like you said, he, he did well. He scored um, scored three goals over the course of their four Gold Cup games, including both their goals in the 3-2 loss to Qatar um, in the quarterfinals. Um, yeah, he's uh, he plays for the U.S. and hasn't hasn't uh, made any appearances in the MLS, but kind of in their, their second tiers, the United Soccer League. Um, he's 29 years old, um, only been involved with the team for the last three years, um, so only 10 caps. Um, two goals coming into the tournament, added three goals um, in the tournament. So, yeah, I mean, you always need players on the field who can score goals for you, um, especially if they're not in that centre-forward position. So um, expect him to kind of be involved given his, his strong performances. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see uh, how they do. I mean, it was very impressive against Qatar because they were down 3-0 uh, and then he scored two goals 
in the space of three minutes uh, at 63 and 66 and suddenly they were back in the game and they almost uh, they almost tied it up so uh, i'm sure he's a pretty big name or he's on uh, the lips of el salvador fans uh, but actually, we'll go oh sorry go he actually thought he scored a hat trick to complete a remarkable comeback but was called a uh, uh, called offside in that game after um, uh, putting the ball in the net. So very right, that, that would have been a tying goal. Yeah, would have been remarkable. Would have yeah. been a 10-minute hat trick had he pulled it off, but uh, <laughs> co correctly called offside, though it was close. Yeah, he would have been a hero for sure. Um, let's go back to the first name on the list, though. Another Portillo. This one is uh, Juan Carlos Portillo. Yeah, a pretty regular player in the squad, someone we expect to be involved, um, playing 11 of their 15 games uh, between the 2019 and 2021 Gold Cup, um, and then had involvement in all in all four of their games, mostly coming in as a sub. Um, he did start uh, the first game, but came in as, as a sub uh, in the next three. Yeah, and I think I, I remember him playing more centrally than uh, than on the left, but um, I'm not as familiar with these players as we are with Canada's player. Uh, right. One name, though, that is very familiar to me is uh, uh, I, I, Jaime Alas. I, the name Alas is familiar to me. How to pronounce the first name I'm less confident with, but uh, 75 caps, he's a real veteran for the team. Yeah, uh, being involved in uh, all the Gold Cups, um, or sorry, for, for most of the Gold Cups since 2011, not involved in the um, the 2017 Gold Cup. But um, when he's, uh, yeah, seemed to be a bit bigger player in the early 2000s, starting, uh, um, starting many of the games in 2011 to 15, a little bit less involved and then was not selected uh, for the 2021 gold cup so um yeah not probably at the point where he's aging out yet so it may be a case of, of el salvador giving some other players a chance um but yeah jaime alas definitely a player that's been around the team um and would expect to be involved again yeah i mean i think i included him here just because he he is in and out a lot it seems like he kind of plays every second gold cup and in his early 30s so he he may not be kind of uh out of the system yeah you can kind of see him uh, as a player who would be who would be good to have on the bench and to to bring in uh if you need him uh yeah he's 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 um he's got two brothers who also play soccer uh dennis and um juan carlos uh and he's actually a twin of Ron, of juan carlos but i think he's the biggest name of the three and yeah, we'll move on again, a less likely candidate than some of the ones we've looked at here, but uh, uh, a veteran to be sure, uh, Andres Flores. Yeah, similar number of caps to Alice. Um, like Alice had been involved uh, kind of on and off in Gold Cup since 2011, uh, but not selected for the 2021 Gold Cup. Yeah, it, it seems like he's never really quite been a full starter for them. Uh, he's been around for a long time, um, but uh, there he is, kind of, again, with so many games and, and uh, also injuries or, or COVID uh, cases happening, they may have to uh, turn to some of these, some of these veterans who are still uh, active for their club teams. And, and sometimes where you can be a little bit more experimental in a Gold Cup, for World Cup qualifying, sometimes teams do return to the more veteran players, um, just knowing how important the games are, they're less perhaps experimental with some of the young players. Absolutely, and and we did kind of learn through this uh, through this Gold Cup that at least some of the teams were being were being quite experimental in you know uh, with, with an eye to um, uh, with an eye to the team that they were gonna they were gonna go with for the World Cup qualifiers. So uh, you're dead right there. Let's move on to the right midfielders. I'm sorry for putting uh, uh, four players in that left midfield category. I was trying to reduce it to two or three, uh, but you'll see why, because in the next uh, couple of sections coming up, 
um, uh, there are some some positions that are actually uh, like the right midfielders. There's only one, or sometimes even none, which probably means some of the the left midfielders, if they have too many of them, will move over into those positions. Uh, let's take a look at uh, Jairo Hernandez. Uh, sorry, Jairo uh, Enriquez. Right, um, an El Salvador-based player. Um, he's been with the team since 2015, but only has 10 caps. Um, so perhaps not a, a regular. Um, that said, he did uh, did start all four of their games in the Gold Cup. So maybe someone benefiting from getting an opportunity while some of the more experienced players are left out. Um, and uh, scored the uh, the opening goal in a 2-0 win against Trinidad in their second game. Yeah, that's right. Uh, uh, he, he was involved in 2015. Uh, then seemed to have dropped. He was only uh, uh, a sub in 2015 for one game. Then he kind of dropped out of the picture for the last two Gold Cups, and and here comes in as a starter. So it's always, uh, I suppose, if we uh, were watching El Salvadorian club football, we might see these players rise and fall. Um, but uh, from our perspective, a bit of a a bit of a surprise there that he was. Uh, uh, a starter after a four-year absence. Okay, let's move on to the left wingers. And again, be a lot of overlap with the midfielders here, but really only one player uh, who is designated as a left winger, and that's uh, uh, Amando Morena. Yes, um, only one cap coming into the tournament. So again, a beneficiary of a perhaps more experimental approach. Um, subbed in in games two and three in the Gold Cup and was a starter, perhaps surprisingly, um, in the, the knockout game against Qatar. Um, born in the United States um, and also plays domestically in the United States, again, in the lower divisions, um, kind of of the U.S. pyramid. Yeah, that's right. He was with uh, Chicago Fire and now is with New Mexico United. I'm not that familiar with them. Is that a new team? It may be. Um, I know there has been a team in New Mexico for a while, but um, there's so many teams actually in the United Soccer League and franchises popping up and getting relocated from time to time. So yeah, it's a hard time keeping track of it. <laughs> I'm familiar with uh, most of the names as I make up these bios. I, I I think honestly that was the first time I had heard of New Mexico United, so it took uh, took me by surprise. But uh, okay, let's move on to uh, right wingers and. We'll see that one of them is uh, Darwin Serene's brother, so at least he uh, made the list, although I do believe he's retired. But we'll start with someone who is more uh, uh, more firmly established in the team, which is jo Joshua Perez. Yeah, Joshua Perez, um, born in the United States, I actually believe is uh, related to the head coach. Um, a nephew, I believe. Um but I might have to double check that and uh, and check back in. Um, however, he did play uh, all four games, um, started all of them. Uh, wasn't able to get on the score sheet, um, but nevertheless a starter for them. Um, he only earned his first cap in in June 2021, um, but uh, had played six games um, prior to the tournament. Yeah, it, it has uh, it has a, a lot of the um, air of nepotism about it. But in fact, he did uh, play quite well uh, in the cup and definitely, I think, justified his place there. He, he also uh, plays in Spain, which uh, I think for all North American teams is a bit of a feather uh, on the national team. He played for Fiorentina in Italy, too. Yeah. Um... And I can confirm he is he is a nephew of the of the head coach, um, but like you said, playing in Europe gives him um, a little bit of credibility beyond being the being related to the coach. Yeah, cachet is that the word? He has some cachet. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Let's move on to uh, Walmer Martinez, uh, another right winger, and he is also uh, new with the team, but he is quite young. Yeah, just 22 years old, another who's been with the team only since uh, 2021. Um, he was a, a substitute in all four of their games. Um, we did manage a goal, um, a goal in stoppage time in a 2-0 win against uh, 
Trinidad. Um, so yeah, a newer a newer player. Um, but hopefully for him, getting that goal will will give him a shot at being involved in some of these more important World Cup qualifiers. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm thinking of the right game, but uh, I think it was the case that they were struggling to uh, score in that game, and then they brought on two substitutes, uh, both of which scored. Um, and, um, I'm going to move on because I'm not confident that I'm I'm thinking of the right situation. But uh, he, he, oh, okay. Yeah. How do you know? Oh, um, just noticing uh, someone else scored as a sub. I'll have to double check in that Trinidad game. But I think goals in '83 and '91. Um, so they saw off a stubborn Trinidad team that had drawn uh, Mexico in their first game. Um, so subs making the difference. Oh, great. Well, nice uh, verification there because I wasn't confident about uh, about my story there. Okay, the last one is Oscar Serene. Again, I'm kind of uh, adding him because he's a veteran who might be uh, brought back into the picture. Uh, do you want to just tell us a bit about him? Yeah, like you mentioned, he's the older brother of Darwin, um, who also plays on the team. Um, he started all three games in the 2019 Gold Cup but was not selected uh, for the preliminary squad for this tournament. Yeah, that's right. And so um, we'll have to see if some of these guys, I mean, uh, we're more familiar with Canada and we definitely know uh, some of the players who didn't show up for the world or for the Gold Cup are still very much in the picture. So it's probably the same with uh, El Salvador that some of these guys look like they may be out of the picture, but will probably be uh, used. Um, okay, attacking midfielders and secondary strikers, uh, there are no players kind of designated uh, in those positions. Probably some of those uh, midfielders uh, would kind of move up into those positions. Um, but we just have uh, forward, uh, forwards, and I, I think El Salvador really missed, uh, uh, were really kind of shocked uh, that David Rogamas was not part of the thing, uh, part of the part of the uh, setup because he came down with a severe flu. I don't know if that means COVID or if it really means a severe flu, um, but uh, he was there for one game uh, and then left the team. Yeah, a real loss. He has a great goal scoring record for them, 10 goals and 17 caps. So um, kind of a goal every other game. Um he, he actually doesn't have a lot of uh, Gold Cup experience for them. Um, so this would have been a really good platform for him to shine. But yes, an unfortunate illness um, right before the tournament um, meant he was unable to play a part. Yeah, I get the feeling they were very excited about him and therefore disappointed. Uh, a lot of those goals came in the in the last uh, CONCACAF Nations League. Um, uh round and uh so uh they're, they're kind of um new even though he's been there uh, on the team since 2015 i think uh, a lot of those goals are recent so uh it made el salvadorians kind of excited to see what he would do at the gold cup uh another new player is uh, marvin marquez and uh he is brand new to the squad yeah, brand new. He actually hadn't appeared for the national team before being named to the preliminary squad. And then um, he made three appearances for the team, all, all from the bench. Um, he did get an assist um, in his uh, in the game against Guatemala, the opening game of the tournament. Um, so, yes, not a lot of experience. Um, only 23, so someone that they may have bigger plans for, um, but probably benefited perhaps from from uh, Ruggamus not being there Um and probably yeah. a mental approach. I think I put him on the list because I think they they uh, are kind of searching uh, for a forward. Uh, once Rogamus left, uh, they used uh, the the left midfielder Rivas, who we talked about, who who yeah. filled his boots very well. But um, you know, he's uh, he he was a midfielder, so uh, and one of the reasons uh, why they need a forward is because it looks like Nelson Bonilla. Uh, who's been with the team for, for quite a while, is making his way out. And he is the last player we're going to look at. Do you want to tell us about him? Yeah, um, 
a player who has 46 caps and 16 goals, so a bit of experience and a bit of a goal threat. Um, he, uh, yeah, involved in uh, Gold Cups in, in 2015, 2016, and 2019, um, but not selected for the 2021 Gold Cup. He only played five of their 15 games after the 2019 Gold Cup. So, um, again, possibly a player on the way out, as you mentioned, though it may be tempting to to bring in someone who has that sort of pedigree in terms of caps and goals uh, for these very important World Cup qualifiers. Yeah, well, he was their top scorer in 2017 and 2019. And uh, not that they scored that many goals in those tournaments, but uh, um, he's someone they have relied on uh, for goals. And uh, I kind of get the feeling he's he's uh, too young to be out of the picture and they're too much in need of a forward to uh, um, to lose him. Anyway, that brings us to the end of our review of uh, El Salvador players. Anything to add there, Connor? No, I think El Salvador was, um, certainly we saw for the Gold Cup, some of the players that we mentioned, 70 caps, 40 caps, 50 caps, these players weren't involved. So I think there was definitely um, um, an effort by by the coach, uh, Hugo Perez, to bring in some new players to see to see what some of these younger players uh, were about. Certainly for some of the players, the more experienced ones, we would expect to see them back in. Um, but the great thing about the Gold Cup is it, can, it gave these players some meaningful games and, and we may see some of them involved. So it'll be kind of interesting to to track how similar the team is uh, in the octagon as it was to the Gold Cup. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of players who come in and out uh, besides. Uh, uh, but it'll be interesting to kind of... Um, use this roster we put up here and see how their starting lineups look uh, in the first games of the World Cup qualifiers. Right. Okay, well, great. Uh, thanks, Connor. And we will see you uh, next time. I'm not sure which podcast we're going to do next, but uh, thanks for joining me in this and for your insights. My pleasure as always. Okay, take care. Bye. Bye-bye.